Hi, so many months ago now, I got an email from a viewer of mine who issued me a small challenge. He had a Sega Master System 2 and he could not get color working on the Master System 2. He'd done a composite mod and that was working, sound was great, but the video just came out in black and white, didn't seem to matter what he attached it to, uh, different TVs, etc, etc, even through the RF output, black and white. So uh, I said, sure, yeah, I'll take that on. Um, and the challenge terms, I suppose, was if I can get the SMS2 working, he would uh, give to me a broken SMS1. And obviously, I took him up on the challenge. Now, the SMS2, I fixed that while I was in the process of moving office, so I didn't actually get, I didn't have the wherewithal to record while I was doing that. Um, it ended up being the crystal oscillator was out of spec and uh, the composite sync signal was not long enough. Uh, so it was just not being able to, the color burst, sorry, was just not being able to lock on and get color out of it. Anyway, I replaced the oscillator with one out of a broken Mega Drive 2 and it started working perfectly, sent it back, and he's been very happy about it. Um, but today I'm going to go into, finally, the SMS Powerbase 1 and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. Now this viewer, uh, Nigel, he actually also added in a little note, so I'd like to read that out just quickly. It says, hi Nick, I've packed both Seegers and I've given you one working power supply uh, and a working RF unit and also the AV cable plug for the SMS1, which was still new with packets. So that's really cool. Thank you very much for that. Uh, maybe you can fix the power supply for yourself. I couldn't. It was just a cheap uh, switch mode power supply though, so I wasn't too fussed about that. I think I e-wasted it. Um, and good luck with it all, and thanks for accepting the challenge of fixing my SMS2. Enjoy the YouTube videos and keep up the great work. Nigel. So thank you very much for that, Nigel, and I do apologize for it taking so long. But uh, yeah, let's um, pop this over on the bench, see if we can figure out what's wrong with it, and fix it. Okay, so we're over on the bench, got the power base out. It looks great. Um, I mean, honestly, it's actually not that in, in pretty good physical condition. It's even got the little plastic on the uh, the front here that I can peel off later. That's kind of cool. But um, yeah, so I don't have a game for it just yet. I mean, I do have some games, but I don't have one in there. It should have a game built in. I think it's going to be Alex Kidd or whatever that motorbike game is. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but we've got some power. We've got our AV cable and... Let's see what happens when we hit the power button here. So we should be looking for a light here and something on the screen. Power. Oh, okay, so it did pick up a composite signal, but it is just completely black and there's no sound coming through either. Interesting. Okay, let's pop in a game. So this is my Sonic the Hedgehog 2 cartridge that I fixed in a previous video. When I was fixing a Sega Master System 2. Let's check it out. Same thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just check. I mean, those contacts look look fine, but who knows, you know? Let's try a different cartridge just to rule out that. Give it a proper good wiggle. Oh, the sound now. It's like a buzzing. It's still no video. Interesting. Maybe I will just give that a fire with some contact cleaner. In while they're still wet. Let's see what we see. Okay, so the buzzing's gone away. Back to a black screen. Definitely something wrong here. So, let's check it out. Pull it apart and see what she says. Um, even on the bottom, it actually looks pretty good too. Not many scratches. Hmm, okay. So, we just got. It's like six screws. Let's, uh, let's get those out of there. All right. What's up to reveal? Uh, pretty stock standard console. So uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh, those are really cool switches. <laughs> They're like... Uh, yeah, 
It's like a, a, a completely bare contact. Huh, neat. Anyway, um, got our Z80 AC CPU there. And we have some RAM here. That would be our video chip, the Sony CXK3864. Um, so the RAM here is 4168C, that's 20, so I'm assuming that's 200 nanoseconds. Um, then we've got some custom Sega chips down here. I'm going to guess these are the video processing or general ASICs. There's a RF box there. Oh, actually, no, the RF is over here. What's in there? Hmm. I don't know. Looks like we've got another video, Sony video chip down there. And then there's some VRAM down in here as well, I'm assuming. So they are NEC D4168C, uh, 15, so 150 nanos. And then down underneath there, I'm going to guess on this big chunk of metal, if we can see in there, not really, <laughs> down there, looks like a, going to guess just a 5 watt regulator, typical LM7805. Um, yeah. Nothing looks horrible. Let's get the board out. No need for it to be confined in here. There we go. We're out. A little bit dusty in here, but not too bad. Okay, what do we see? Um, on the bottom, the board looks pretty good too. Um, no obvious signs of any damage. Might be some factory rework here in that 5 volt regulator, what I'm assuming, over there. But nothing, uh, nothing looking bad. The, uh, the cartridge, no, sorry, the, um, the card connector is pretty mangy, mangy, but not bad. Let's see if we can get this heatsink off, shall we? So it looks like, let's try with the extendo bit from my iFixit kit, not sponsored. So that goes in there, that goes in there, and then that just kind of goes up in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, beautiful. And now we'll just remove those last two screws from the bottom here. And the heatsink should just drop away. Cool. Let's see what we got. Yep, 7805. So let's give some power. I'm going to test the input. So we are getting, yeah, 8.9 volts. That's good. And the output. 4.9 volts, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Hmm. Let's check if our CPU is running. So let me just get the uh, data sheet. <laughs> yes, I do just keep a uh, folder full of data sheets of chips that I need. Uh -huh. uh, so, hey. Take a look. So we're looking for ground will be on pin. Well, I can just pick up ground anywhere, and we're looking for five volts on pin eleven. So let's power us on. Let's pick up ground from here, and we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oop. And yes, we have five volts. Oh, you can't see. There you go. So, that's good. Let's check the reset line, pin 26. So this is 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I'm gonna make sure that is high. Yep, so the CPU should be running. 
And let's see if we can check the clock signal. Don't know if this will go high enough, um, but let's go. Pin six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yep, 3.5 something megahertz. That's good enough. So, yep, we have a good clock. CPU should be running. Hmm, what's going on? Okay, well, my instinct here would be to um, just recap this because, uh, as you can see here, it's from 1986, it is now 2023. This is old, and these are the original capacitors. They look fine, but looks can be deceiving, and at this age, might as well just recap it. it. Even if I can get this working, hopefully I can, I'd want to recap it regardless, just so that it can continue to work for as long as possible. So let's uh, get all of these guys off, uh, get some pop, uh, pop in some replacements, and uh, well, see if that does anything. If not, let's move on to something else. Alrighty, recap's done. So what I will do, which I typically always try to do, is just mark top of each cap with a green line, just to note to myself that I have indeed recapped this one in the past. Really. And then, let's give it a test. So, plug in our video. So that we are recording. Uh, I got our power. And let's see what happens when we hit the go button. Nothing. Let's try it with the game in. Oh, mm, no, not quite. <laughs> let's try a different game in. Get the cartridge on the socket. No, still nothing. So, not quite as simple as just a recap. Alright, let's move on to bigger and better things. Let's give the next thing a try. And, well, just from my experience, especially with these NEC and D780Cs, if you have seen my video on. Uh, the Sigur C3000, that same CPU is pretty prone to failing. So let's um, let's check it out. I've got my scope out, and I've got the uh, the scope output capturing there. Um, let's grab the pin out again and see what we see. So let's check. Um, I want to check that clock signal again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and just make sure that we are getting good. Yep, that's alias, but up there it says 3.54693 megahertz, pretty solidly, so that's good. Um, let's check some of the data lines. Go down to pin 14 for D0. 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, looks like we got good data. What about on D1? Yeah. So what I'm looking here for is just that the uh, the signal is bouncing from zero, which is the, the line at the bottom there, and then up pretty constantly and comfortably. Uh, not just kind of like hanging around at a midpoint or not like sitting dead high or dead low, for instance. So there's D7. That looks like it's going. So this is what you know, data activity looks like. Yeah. 
Um, this is a five volts. Yeah. Let's go up to what's that? D six. Yeah, looks good. D seven or D five, D three. Yeah, and D four. So all the data lines look fine. And there's our clock again. Check things like our memory require, our memory request, I/O request, read and write pending down here. So they would be uh, memory request is here. That's bouncing all over the shop. That's expected. I/O request. Oh, that doesn't look good though. It is just sitting between four and five volts. Yeah, that should be bouncing around like the memory request is. So it's basically. This is requesting information from the controller ports. So this needs to drop down to ground when it wants to try to read from the controller ports. And if it's not, it means it's not even getting to that, you know, point in its code. It's interesting. What about read? So that's good. That means it's trying to read from memory when those spikes are low. And write would be writing to its RAM. Yeah, it looks pretty bad too. That's just, again, sitting up at four to five volts like IO request is. I think there's something wrong with this CPU. So, yeah, let's, um, I think I'll pop that out. I've got some spares. Pop another one in and, uh, well, actually what we can do is I've got a uh, Z80 tester right here as well that I can try that out in. Uh, but also, yeah, we'll open, pop a socket in and pop a spare in and see see what we see. All right, let's get on to doing that. Alrighty, well, we got the chip out, so let's pop it in the tester here. Plonk it in, give it a close. Let's see what we see, let's give it a hold reset. Hmm, yeah, it does seem to be working. It's executing the no ops correctly. That's just uh, basically cycling through all of its address lines on this row of LEDs, although this one's usually flashing. Hmm. Hmm. No, that light usually flashes. Maybe it'll flash in a bit. Something to do with the refresh states of the CPU. Hmm. There we go. Okay, so it flashes when it gets to the last one. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, so it seems to be uh, accessing code correctly, but we saw that it wasn't using the address line's fine, but the write line and the IO request were kind of odd. So still going to probably um, pop this in uh, with a socket and try a different CPU regardless, just to check, verify that um, something else isn't wrong in the CPU. Let's go grab a socket. Alrighty, here's my my stock of uh, CPUs, these are uh, hmm, dodgy China ones, <laughs> um, quote unquote new old stock, but they're obviously pools and the uh, markings don't really match, but I've tested them and they all do seem to be working fine. So let's run with one. So let's just bend the pins a bit straighter. Okay, and make sure that we have it up in the right position, push it in, okay, now let's get all of our power and whatnot back in, let's see what we see, nope, same thing, not, it's kind of weird though, 
Hmm, let's try it with cop. It's getting noise now. Hmm. Now, are we seeing the same signal for the IORQ and read? Let's check that out. Let's take this cut out of the way. Drive to our scope and probe. Yes, we are. Yeah, so they are exactly the same. So wherever that's coming from, that is not from the CPU. So let's pop this out and put our... Okay, and... Yeah, same thing. Okay. Well, so it's not the CPU that we thought it may be, but we're definitely getting some bad signals from somewhere. So, I think this next step is we should take a look See if we can find some schematics, try to figure out where those signals are coming from elsewhere on the CPU, and we can try to track something else that's uh, holding them up. Okay, here we go. So we're looking at the CPU, which is ICM1. It's down here, and we've got um, I see one Z80A. Uh, so right, pin 22 there, IO request. Also on pin 22. That doesn't make sense. I must be reading that wrong. Yeah, I can't quite make that out. Well, anyway, let's track right. So we're looking for right low, and it goes on this bus here. Comes down to here, but there's no right there. Track it over here. Ah, there it goes. So it comes from this gate array. 315-5216. That's this gate array right here which doesn't help because that is a custom part and uh, that sucks <clears throat> um, hmm is it 315-5216 315-5216 and here's the pin out of our 315-5216 we have right down here Pin 21, let's just double check that is accurate. Twenty-one here, should look the same. Yep. Hmm. Where else did they go? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So it's between the gate array. And so this is the VDP. It's that guy there. I see five. Hmm. I see two. Oh, so this is a ROM. It's not actually the uh, video controller. I didn't know Sony made ROMs, but there you go. Hmm. Okay. And then this is I see three. That's our system RAM. Yeah, and then this is video RAM over here for the video controller, so... Yeah... Now we can rule out the ROM because it doesn't work when we're on cartridge as well. It's same symptoms. Um, I should see a little bit of corrosion there that I missed earlier. Let's just double check. That's not a problem. Okay, they're going fine. And that one, pull through there, yeah, no problem. Okay. But down here, there's a bit more corrosion. Ooh. Now that's interesting. Hello. Looks like we found a broken trace. Okay. 
Let's just point that out. So you can see here was my Tweezy Boys. This trace here. Can't really see. Comes up through there. And then dies out here. So let's try and figure out what you are. And it comes from that one, which is this pin, goes up here. So that goes to pin 20, no, 21, 20, 19, 18 of the gate array, which is pin 18 of the gate array is our memory request. Where does that go to? It goes back here. It goes through that dot there. It goes all the way over here to the pause switch or the cart connector. And it continues on upwards somewhere else, I think straight into the CPU. So let's just double check that we've got continuity between on the CPU, which is pin 19, and we don't, look at that, that's interesting, okay, now we're getting somewhere, so what's this, this is IO request, and that should go to that one, yes, so that one gets there, but memory request does not. That is critical. Mmm, okay. So, we definitely have some corrosion right there that we're going to need to clear out. Okay. This is a great sign. So let's, uh, let's get in there. I might bust out the microscope for this because it's kind of close. Okay, and there you can see our corrosion. Up close and personal, that is this line right here. So... If we scrape back a little from either side of there, let's get some bit of light on the subject. And let's grab our probes out so we can do some testing. We've got our... Uh -huh. So if I probe from this point, this one goes further down. I can't really give you the full gist, but it goes down here and then goes to this point here. And then go to there and we get nothing. So if we scratch some of this back, I'm not even getting it there. Uh, that's terrible, Muriel. There we go, now we're getting there. Still definitely nothing there. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just grab my um, some sort of mechanic whizzer thingy, and it will buff. right there. Let's tidy that up. Yeah, that is completely gone. So, there's our problem. Well, possibly there's our problem. Oh, interesting, so that must be... I'm gonna guess gunk from this capacitor here has leaked down there and corroded this whole area. Okay, well, let's, um, let's whiz away a little bit more of that trace, just down here. Well, not the trace, but the uh, solder mask. So we've got something nice to solder to. Okay, 
And let's grab some of our little wire hull. Let's grab some flux. transparent flux so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay. Okay, and let's tin those leads. Let's just get in there with a bit of solder on the tip. And tin everything up nicely. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab some of this wire I have. You can see it there. Let's see if we can focus up on that so you can see what I'm doing. I am just tipping the tip to my iron and then just flooding, and that will melt away some of the enamel. And give me metal to solder to. And then I'm gonna come back down here, solder that into the big pin right there, the the there. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is clip off just a little bit of that. Let's bend it over this way. solder on my iron and just try and melt that enamel while I'm holding it over the trace and that should put it down to both sides. Beautiful. Okay. And then we should just be able to and uh, where is my knife? Somewhere, there it is. Be able to come in with a sharp knife. And clean that up. Cool. And let's uh, get rid of that flux. Go back to overhead cam. Okay, so we're back. Um, okay, now get our beeper again and let's check that pin back to here. And now we have continuity again. Awesome. All right, let's uh, get recording. Get our plug AV. Make sure our power's off. Let's get power in, we'll get, uh, oh, I just rig and I realized I bent off the voltage rig. Okay, let's fix that. <laughs> Whoops. CDIL, well, M7805. Let me go in like that. This is probably where I would need to actually do it this way. So if we stick that on there, put the screw in the heat sink. And this is just for alignment purposes. Just so I get the right height. And then if we pop that on, like so you can see that I've got, now I've got the right height there. And we can solder that in. All right. Now let's give it a test. Flick it on. And there you go. Sega. Master system. Look at that. Ah, so it doesn't have a game built in. That's interesting. Okay, let's try our game in there. Let's put Sonic in. Alrighty. Oh, didn't pick it up. Okay. Let's try Wonder 
boy. Slightly better. Yeah, look at that. Wonder boy. Got sound. Alright. Let's try. Controller. No, I don't have any original, so I've just got these cheapies. Let's give it a shot. And we'll see what we see. Yeah, look, it looks like it's working fine. jazzed about that. Um, yeah, so it looked like the whole problem with this was that one uh, broken trace. So just some corrosion. Possibly the recap helped, but yeah, one of those capacitors, I'm assuming, melted through that little trace there. And uh, see the little bodge wire that I put in place to solve it. And yeah, and then we've got a nice uh, C master system. So let me get this uh, unplugged and put it back together. Okay, power base back from the wash, and it looks, it came up really good, so I'm really happy with this. The only thing is, actually let's have a look at that board first, you can see just how nice it polished up. There's the repair bit there, I put a little bit of UV around it, uh, UV solder mask I should say, and the back looks stunning. God, gorgeous traces. Anyway, um, yes, no, the only unfortunate part is the standoff here. Uh, this is what holds the, the the cartridge goes there, the two screws around the cartridge, that one just disintegrated. So you can see it's completely broken off and that bit of plastic is just kind of flapping in the breeze. So um, I might uh, have a shot at rebuilding that with um, two special ingredients, I guess, which would be uh, bicarb and superglue. So these together make a pretty strong, sturdy, plastic kind of material. So what I'll be trying to do is, um, I'm going to have to fill this in effectively, but I will be making a little moulding there of another one of these. So I'll probably put some plastic, uh, some paper tape or some washi tape or something around there. Um, fill it layer by layer with the bicarb and then top it up with a bit of thingy, get rid of the excess, rinse repeat until we have a new post then I'll pop a hole straight down the middle and we should be able to thread a screw into there and hopefully that'll um that'll give us a fix so let's uh let's dive into doing that so like I said I'm gonna need um some kind of mold to you know re rebuild but there's a little mold kind of it's more of a hole cavity than anything <laughs> so, that's the whole plan. So what I'm going to do is try and get that as round as possible. I'm going to fill up the bottom. And then try and very gently some baking soda in there. And then rinse and repeat. Now, one thing that you may have noticed is that I went kind of above and beyond and oversized here because what we can do is go and grind this down basically to the size that we want it. So I'm going to go take that outside, give it a clean up, probably a, a whiz down with my Dremel bit and um, get that down to basically the same size as this post and then I'll probably uh, pre-drill a hole so that the screw will have um, 
well, yeah, a hole to, to dig into. Cool. All right, so the SMS Powerbase 1 is done. I've given it a really good clean. I took that plastic off. I uh, gave it a little bit of a plastic polish in a couple of spots, but overall it's actually turned out really nice. And that um, plastic repair that I did inside there, uh, you can't see it from outside, but it's really held the mainboard in nice and solidly, and that screw went in beautifully. So I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I'm glad to finally add a Master System 1 power base to my collection. Now, I don't have my SMS2 here at the moment, um, but I do have my SC3000 that I've recently, uh, previously repaired on the channel up on the shelf, and I think if we put our uh, Wonder Boy cartridge in here, that the Powerbase 2 would have a perfect home up on the shelf. Maybe make a 3D mount that'll tilt it forward or something like that. We'll figure that out later. But uh, yeah, thanks again to Nigel for sending this in and issuing that challenge, and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. We'll see you in the next video.